In the next part of this lecture, we are going to understand how we describe the association between two numerical variables. What are we going to do in this case? We first introduced what is a scatter plot and then we try and interpret the association between the two variables using the scatter plot. Recall, we interpreted the association between two categorical variables using the notion of a contingency table and here we are going to use the notion of a scatter plot. And then further we will just briefly introduce how we summarize this association through a concept of a line and then we will also introduce the notion of a correlation matrix so that this notion can be extended to understand association between more than two variables. So, what is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is defined as a graph that displays pairs of values as points on a two dimensional plane. So, what do we mean by this? So, let us start with a very simple example. Suppose I am looking at two variables. What are the two variables I am looking at? The first variable I am looking at is age and the second variable I am looking at is height. The people are the same, so I have an observation here. So, this is my first or this is the person, okay. The first person is of age 1 and 75 centimeters, person 2, person 3, person 4, person 5 and I am just looking at the age of this person. So, what this means and the way I can interpret is the person's one age is 1 and 75 centimeters. I can write this as an ordered pair 175. For the person 2, age is 2 and height is 85 centimeters. Age is measured in years, height is measured in centimeters. Person 3, is 3 and 94 centimeters, person 4 is 4 and 101 and person 5 is 5 and 108 centimeters, okay. So, I have two variables, both of the variables are numerical and I am measuring these two variables age in units of years and height in units of centimeters and the question we are asking here is are age and height associated with each other? This is the question we are asking. This is the question we are asking. Now, to answer this question, we first try and plot it as a scatter plot on a two dimensional plane. Now, when I am plotting it on a two dimensional plane, all of us know that this axis is called the x axis and this axis is called the y axis. So, the first thing which we need to decide is which of these two variables would go on the x axis and which variable would go on the y axis. The rule of thumb is when I want to understand the association between any two variables, typically I might want to know whether one variable is being explained by the other variable. In this example, I would want to know whether as a person grows older, I want to know what is the height or what is the association with the height. Does the height of an individual increase or does it decrease or is there an, any association at all? So, the variable that goes on to your x axis, that is it is also referred to as the explanatory variable, the variable that you are using to explain and the variable you would like to explain which is height in this example is also referred to as a response variable that is on my y axis. So, I can write my response variable on my y axis. In this case, it is the height which is measured in centimeters and my explanatory variable is 
age which is again measured in years. So, once I have the age and height written, then I will go and start writing on my x axis. Remember, we are again talking about numerical data. There is an order to it. So, I have, I start with a 0 age, I have a 1, I have a 2, I have a 3, I have a 4, I have a 5, I have a 6. I can start putting my data on my x axis and what is the data on my x axis? It is the age in years. That is what is given to me. Now, when I look at the height, I can start and remember I can put a break here because I want to start with 70 centimeters. I have 80, 90, 100, 110. So, first age 75. So, this would be the point which is associated with, with my first point. With 2, I have 85 which is this point. With 3, I have 94 which is this point. With 4, I have 101 which is again this point and with 5 I have 108 which is this point. So, in effect what we have done is we have actually plotted the data that is the pairs of values. What are the pairs of values we have here? This is the first pair, this is the second pair, this is the third pair, this is the fourth pair and this is the fifth pair. I have these five pairs of values which I have represented as points on my two dimensional place. So, this plot which I have constructed here is what we refer to as a scatter plot. So, the scatter plot is an extremely powerful graph which generally is just the scatter or it is a display of pairs of values of my variables. Now, let us look at another example. So, a real estate agent has collected the prices of different size of homes. So, what the real estate agent has done? He has gone. He has collected 1, 2, 3, up to 15 homes. So, the real estate agent has collected on every home the size of the house. This is measured in thousands of square feet and the price of the house in lakhs of rupees. This is what I have as my data. So, what is it I am seeking? The seeking, the question I am seeking an answer to is whether there is a relationship between the price of a home and size of a home. Now, in this example, you very clearly see that I want to see whether the prices vary according to the sizes. So, the natural explanatory variable in this case, in this example is going to be the size of a house, whereas my response variable in this case is going to be the price of a house. So, whenever you want to understand the association between two variables and you are interested in plotting or coming up with a graphical display in terms of a scatter plot, the first step is to recognize what is your explanatory variable and what is your response variable. Okay. So, next he wanted to know whether the prices of home increase linearly with the size. We will come to answer this question in some time, but even before that, we want to see what is the rec data he has recorded. So, this is my data. So, I have a different data given here. So, with this data, what we do is, if I am just going to, so I have 50 data points and I have these are the lakhs, INR lakhs, so 68 lakhs is 800 square feet house co is costing me 68 lakhs, 1000 square feet is 81 lakhs, 1100 square feet is 72 lakhs and the 3400 square feet house is 170 lakhs. So, what I do now is I just, so now I have, I need to plot a scatter plot. So, on my x axis, I am going to take the size. On the y axis, I take the price of the house. Plot a scatter plot. 
how do I plot a scatter plot? So let's go back to our Google Sheets. This is the data given. I have the same data given in my Google Sheet. So you can see that this is the same data. I have 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 1.1. So I have 68, 81, 72. This is in square feet and this is in lakhs of rupees. So the first thing I want to ask is, can I plot a scatter plot? The Google Sheet gives me an easy way to plot a scatter plot. Let's go about and plot a scatter plot using a Google Sheet. So the first step is highlight the data you want to plot as a scatter plot. And I have highlighted the data. Insert chart. So if I go to insert and go for a chart, you can see that I have a scatter chart which has appeared and this is what it is. Under the x-axis tab, the x-axis, I have it chooses the square feet and it has automatically chosen in this case because that was my first column available and in under the series tab, it gives me what is the response variable which is again price in INR lakhs and I can again label title and access appropriately. So you can see that I have a nice scatter plot between the size and the price which I have got from my Google Sheet. So this is the scatter plot we have got. Again, I have size on my x-axis and price on my y-axis. So this tells us how to construct a scatter plot. Now, once given a scatter plot, let's look at another example. Okay. For example, if I go and look at this other example I have here. So, the same price. So, I remove this. I now remove this. Let me remove this graph because I have already. I will delete this chart. Let me go to another example where I am again talking about same the price and the size versus the price. This is the data I have. But if I am plotting a scatter plot between this data, you can notice a scatter plot of this kind. Okay. So, let us copy the scatter plot. So, what we do is, this is the scatter plot. Again, 15 homes, I have a scatter plot here. So, this graph, both the graphs, actually plot size versus price. This is for my first data set which I call data set 1 and this is for the second data set which I refer to as data set 2. Okay. So, now if you look at this in data set 1, I can observe that as the sizes of the homes are increasing, the prices are also exhibiting some sort of a trend or it increases. Whereas in this, I have smaller homes. For example, if I look at this size of a home, I have both a lower priced house and a higher priced house. And I have larger homes also. This is a larger home because the size is a larger size. This size also I have a lower priced and a higher price. A mid-size home also has a lower price and a larger price. In other words, this data set 1 has a pattern which I can in some sense explain whereas in data set 2, I do not see any clear pattern. Okay. So, the first thing which we want to understand is Remember, we wanted to know whether a scatter plot can actually help us understand association between numerical variables. So, we can see that from these two examples, in the case of one example, I can actually see a pattern, whereas in the other case, I do not see any clear pattern. Okay. So, the visual test for association tells us whether you can see a pattern or not see a pattern. So, what we have learned so far is A, first given a data set, identify what is your explanatory variable and 
and what is your response variable? Given this, let your explanatory variable be on the x axis, response variable on the y axis, draw a scatter plot. Once you have a scatter plot, then I could have a scatter plot which is of this kind where I see a pattern, or I could have a scatter plot which is of this kind where I really do not see any clear pattern between my x and a y. This is referred to as a visual test for association and how do we actually draw conclusions from this visual test is what we are going to see next.